Hello, how's it going? Long time no see. Apologies for the little break, but I'm back now. In today's video, I'm covering Invasion of Kazmodan and Tides of Darkness from Chronicle Volume 2. So let's go! The region of Kazmodan was filled with dwarven blacksmithing forges, and the mountains were rich with oil and metal ores and sandwiches. Just all sorts of useful stuff, really. The Bronzebeard Dwarves had carved themselves a grand city into the heart of the mountain. They'd lived there, in Ironforge, for the last 2,000 years. This is stuff we already know. However, the Horde were currently marching into Kazmodan, amid a fierce blizzard. Did they have the element of surprise? Not even slightly. The Dwarves used demolition teams to collapse the mountain tunnels leading into the region, which had slowed the Orcs down a little bit. They'd also called upon their allies, the Gnomes, for help. The two races had pooled their resources and set up defensive positions across the region. Despite these preparations, and you may be surprised to hear this, the Dwarves and Gnomes were no match for the Orcish army. Hundreds of the little buggers fell before the Orcs' hungry blades. One by one, the Horde conquered the settlements, outposts and armories that dotted the landscape. The Dwarves had no choice but to cheese it back to Ironforge, and the Gnomes were like, sod this, and buggered off back to Gnomeregan. Doomhammer wasn't all that bothered about chasing after the Gnomes, so he committed his forces to focus on toppling Ironforge. But this wasn't going to be as easy as that last bit. Nearly every resident within the fortress city had taken up arms. Male dwarves, female dwarves, even baby dwarves. This was possibly going to be their last stand, and they'd rather die with a battle axe in hand than bloody surrender like a goddamn pussy. A huge battle took place. For every one dwarf that died in battle, they managed to take ten orcs with them. The cost in lives was so ridiculous that Orgrim called off the siege. They didn't need Ironforge for the time being. They'd taken the surrounding region, its bountiful resources were theirs to exploit. But to keep the dwarves contained, he stationed the Bleeding Hollow Clan outside the city's gates. He then ordered Blackrock Orcs to mine the mountains and commandeer the forges, and the Horde gained their armaments. Side note, the Orcs did attempt to destroy Gnomeregan after they'd failed at Ironforge, but they failed again. The Gnomes were pretty tech-savvy. They rigged explosives and set booby traps in the surrounding region. Doomhammer eventually called off the attack, and just like with Ironforge, he stationed Bleeding Hollow clan members to keep the gnomes contained within their city. Now that they'd conquered most of Kazmodan, Doomhammer thought about the next phase of his campaign. If they wanted to reach the human kingdoms by land, they'd have to pass through a swampy, horrible place called the Wetlands. It wasn't the safest route, plus it would be all muddy and stuff. Trying to navigate and transport siege engines and an army through that sort of terrain would take ages, and be a right pain in the genitals. And after that, they'd have to cross the narrow Thandal Span Bridge, a site that humans could easily defend. The main thing was, the humans would be expecting the orcs to travel north by land, so the best option would probably be to do the unexpected, build a fleet of ships and surprise the shit out of them by sea. Although nobody was about to question the War Chief's plan, the orcs were a little bit worried about it. They weren't sailors. In fact, some of the more superstitious clans were actually kind of scared of the open sea. But, surprisingly, Gul'dan and his new Storm Reaver clan were actually kind of helpful in convincing the Horde that this was going to be brilliant. It's the best course of action, and we'll be safe, buddies, so don't worry about it. Orgrim was like, cheers mate, but also secretly still a bit wary of the Warlock. What's that bastard up to now? So in a bay southwest of the wetlands, Orgrim oversaw the construction of a vast but kind of dumb looking fleet. The Orcs had no idea how to build ships. Some of the Ogres had maritime knowledge and helped build big ships called Juggernauts. And the Amani Trolls helped them build smaller but swift ships called Buggernauts. No, I, I don't know what they were called. However, Doomhammer managed to acquire help from a completely new ally, Goblins. The Goblins had been watching the Horde for a while and had seen its conquest of Stormwind. And very much like the real world, war is profitable. They can make a lot of moolah from the Horde's war on the humans. So the Goblins of the Steamweedle Cartel approached the invaders with an offer. This is a new world, eh? One you're not familiar with. We can give you technology, maps, intel, for the right price of course. What do you say? Now if it was Blackhand, he probably would have just forced the goblins into servitude, maybe beaten them up a bit. But Orgrim was a nicer bloke. These goblins had balls. He loves balls. There was more benefit to treating them as equals. They want gold? They can have it. They'd recovered a fortune from Stormwind's coffers, but it's bloody useless. What do they need gold for? What does anyone need gold for? Buy themselves a bloody mobile auction house or something? Big whoops, you got a mobile auction house, but do you have a girlfriend, hmm? So the goblins were paid handsomely for their help, and it turned out they were accomplished shipwrights. So he hired them to oversee the construction of the fleet, and everybody got to work, whilst Doomhammer did everything he could to camouflage this construction from human scouts. Soon, it will be time. Time to finally get this second war started. And we're leaving it there! In the next Volume 2 video, the Alliance of Lordaeron and the Order of the Silver Hand get formed, which kind of ties in nicely to the most recent Volume 3 video from last week, so that kind of works out well. 
As always, thanks very much to those of you who support the channel as patrons. Links in the description if anyone's interested in supporting the channel in that way. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!